What's up everybody? I am in Los Angeles with somebody who does not need a introduction. These brothers talents out here from Detroit. I am with DJ House Shoes. Thanks for being with me today. Good to be here, brother. Tell me a little bit about uh, where you're from. Uh, I come from born and raised in Lathrop Village. Well, I was born in Royal Oak, you know what I mean? Raised in Lathrop Village, which is a part of Southfield, which borders Detroit on the west side. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, always loved music. Went to college for a minute. Maybe some seconds, actually. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. That didn't work out, so I just started buying records and DJing, and some of the homies made beats, so I got into that. And eventually kind of became the... the you know, I had the, I had the responsibility... To, uh, to take care of the city. You know, I'm blessed with that platform. I'm very grateful for it. I just was able to curate the ears of the city for damn near 10 years. You know what I mean? 94 to 2000? <coughs> yep. Right. Yep. Well, like 12 years, actually. Yeah, to 2006. Yeah, but I basically, you know, I just love this shit. So I, I would always find the, the brand new shit, all the heat. And that was my goal just for the next six days before next Friday to have all the new shit and just beat motherfuckers up with it. You know what I mean? Any obstacles you had to endure growing up? None. <laughs> I ain't gonna front, bro. It was easy living, you know? We wasn't, we wasn't well off. We was fucking middle class, you know what I mean? My mom held it down. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, man. I'm grateful to come up where I did because it was a real kind of melting pot of every kind of culture so you can't really grow up with any adverse feelings towards anybody because you, you know, right. you might be a dick. That don't mean that everybody looked like you was a dick. Right. All these motherfuckers are dicks sometimes. You know what I mean? So I'm grateful for that. When I, uh, I'm from Indiana, not too far from Michigan. Yeah, you're on the When corner. I think of Midwest, Detroit hip hop, first people that come to mind is Awesome Dre and MC Breed. Mm -hmm. What about since you were there in that area? Who? What are some of the earliest memories for you? Oh man. Uh, Chaos and Maestro was my shit in middle school, but prior to that, you know, there would be late night shows on a weekend that I would, of course, you had Mojo, and, uh, Jeff Mills, you know, the wizard, he'd be playing shit, but the hip hop shows on the weekends, like Billy T had a show on 107.5 called the DMZ, and I remember I would go to my, my pop's house on the weekends, and I would stay up and just sit on the edge of the bed with the headphones. I would be asleep, because it was like from 12 to 2. It would be late. I would wait up for it. You know, listen to the, like, the fat boys getting interviewed in Detroit. It was right. crazy. Um, but yeah, the local records, man, definitely, like, Chaos and Maestro was a very important one. Definitely Awesome Dre. Uh, the Merciless Amir, A Day Without a Rhyme. That was a very strong record. That was like a threshold that, that prior to that hadn't been crossed, you know, just in the, it's a, it was a great fucking record for that time. It was a competitive record. Like this could, this could compete with some East Coast shit or some West Coast shit. You know? right. Yeah. Before uh, producing and DJing, what was a typical day like for House Shoes? Before. Shit. Real talk, I ain't start drinking or smoking or fucking <laughs> until after high school. So, I mean, I was just fucking listening to music and, and hooping up till I was 18. Then I went to school, got kicked out, and it was fucking rap life after that. You know what I mean? Right. There's a million DJs out there. What do you think it is about yourself that separates yourself from the rest? Uh, I don't give a fuck. I think the dumbest shit... I understand on a commercial level, all that you gotta read the room and da 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 da. da. I don't give a fuck about any of that. Right. You know what I mean? What you're like, feeling. In the the students don't dictate the education. Right. You know what I mean? Stuff. And I never understood why somebody that hears the same shit all day on the radio wants to go and party off of that same shit. Like it's so many fucking records out here that are incredible, and it's so much shit that you'll never hear in the club just because motherfucker might love it, but. Work is different for a lot of these cats. They're like servants. Right. I'm not. I'm a teacher. I'm not a servant. I'm a public servant, but I'm not. Yeah, no requests, none of that shit. How many years have you been DJing so far now? Twenty five years. No, wait. Two thousand. 
we're in 2020, so yeah, 94, 26 years. Yeah, the first party I ever did, though, it was funny. It was only, like, three people there. It was, like, after the last day of sixth grade. <laughs> and I had one of them them units where it had, like, the dual cassette and the CD player, mm -hmm. turntable on the top. And I just had all my shit lined up. I was like, I'm going to play this tape. I'm going to play this record. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, I was, it wasn't, like, DJing per se, but right. you know what I mean? You, you got motherfuckers out here DJing off of YouTube videos now. Like, right. So. It was it was more intricate than that, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And that was sixth grade, so that was thirty two years ago. Right. So technically, thirty two years, I guess. Dope. 